Monday, January 31st, 2022, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to look at uh, when the end game for the dollar and for all its uh, cousins, all, all the other fiat currencies, is really going to kick in. I'm going to reference a couple of books today. I'm going to reference Human Action by Ludwig von Mises of the Austrian School of Economics. It's like his Bible, really, about economics. It's the kind of book that uh, you reference parts of. You don't read it all at once. That's the kind of book it is. And I'm uh, also referencing one of my favorites, Fiat Money Inflation in France, uh, How It Came, What It Brought, and How It Ended by Andrew Dixon White. Of course, there are free PDFs for this book, books if you're interested, but you can also buy them. I'll put them below in the description, the, the free PDFs. One thing I would say, though, uh, I get a lot of comments. <laughs> and the people who, who make these comments know who they are. I'm not going to mention them. And they keep going, uh, saying, uh, well, people like you and others are, have been saying this for years. Well, maybe, but the, the point is that uh, all fiat currencies in history eventually go to zero. The fiat dollar has lasted longer. And when we read about the hyperinflation in Germany in the 1920s, when we re read about France in the 1790s and so on, usually we think about the year where, where it all really culminated and a lot of times we forget that there was a period where the inflation uh, was gestated, so to speak, where it was created and where it wasn't a problem uh, for uh, quite a long time. And uh, that's what I think is happening. And uh, yes, it, it's been a, a very long process, the uh, inflation of the US dollar or the Federal Reserve note. Um, but since the, the Fed was created in 1913, the dollar has lost uh, about 96.4% of its purchasing power. This is data from the Federal Reserve. And uh, I think what we're experiencing now could be the final few percents. We were on on the way to like an end game back in the late 70s. Paul Volcker though was able to, to delay the end game by uh, allowing rates to go up to like 20%. And he could do that at the time because the debt burden for government, for consumers, for corporations uh, wasn't that great. But nowadays, if they try to pull, pull a Volcker, the uh, central bankers, and even the government, uh, it will be impossible. We will have riots <laughs> on the streets. It's going to make what's happening now across the world in terms of protests, uh, like a, make it look like a picnic, so to speak. And... Uh, Looking at history, like what happened in France, for example, um, I'm reading this again over the weekend. And uh, originally, they just wanted to do one issue of the Assignats, and they were very reluctant. That was the French National Assembly uh, that had just been formed in uh, 1789. And then in 1790, they decided to issue... Uh, the Assignats very re reluctantly. The vote was pretty close, just like in Congress. Uh, it was 400 million leave. And, uh, and it helped the economy in France, re revolutionary France. But, but then things slowed down a little bit. There wasn't that much rising prices or inflation. So they decided to do another 800 million and they said, well, the 1200 million or 1 1.2 billion, that will be it. 
And then again, things improved, but then they got worse and they got even worse compared to the first time around. And then they decided to do more issues of Assignats. And then by the mid 1790s, uh, the Assignats and the Mandats, uh, they were completely worthless. And the general public was ruined. A lot of people were ruined, ruined that had put their wealth into this uh, fiat currency. And you had massive inflation as well. Gold and silver went out of circulation completely. And uh, yes, it took time. So what I'm trying to say here, I, I think uh, the Fed embarked on this road, inflation road. And, and uh, what Andrew Dixon White says here, once you embark in a policy of inflation, that's when you can't get out. And uh, why would a central bank and the government purposefully inflate the currency? Well, <laughs> because they can, and it's much easier than tightening your belt and doing the right thing and being patient for the economy to recover. Uh, politicians, bankers, they always want the easy way out. So I'm going to reference uh, uh, the passage about the crack up boom from human action. And I think it's uh, going to tell you exactly not the time uh, that it will happen, but when it's happening, you will know that we are in the crack up boom. So here we go. The crack up boom. Are we there yet? <laughs> it's the, about the kids' movies, right? Kids are always asking the parents when they're driving away for a, a vacation, are we there yet, right? I remember asking my parents that. Uh, it's annoying. And uh, yes, it, it has been a, a long wait. But uh, this is what it says then. But then finally, the masses wake up. So you see, I've been awake to this process for a couple of decades. Some of you have been awake as well for a long time. Uh, the important thing, as it says here, when the masses wake up, I, I think they're still asleep. Yes, they, they can see the inflation, the cost of living rising, but they think it's just something that's happening because of COVID, right? And the supply chain. That's what they've been told by the people that create the inflation. So. They become suddenly aware of the fact that inflation is a deliberate policy and will go on endlessly. <laughs> and that's why the Fed has to blame everyone but themselves for the inflation. And uh, going on endlessly. Yes, <laughs> we already sp saw uh, Neil Kashkari of the Minneapolis Fed on Friday say, oh, if we raise rates uh, uh, once or twice and, and then inflation comes off, we could think about stopping. So they're already thinking about that, right? Because they can't really stop the uh, policy of inflation. A breakdown occurs. The crack of boom appears. Everybody is anxious to swap his money or currency against real goods, no matter whether he needs them or not, no matter how much money he has to pay for them. Within a very short time, within a few weeks or even days, the things which were used as money are no longer used as media of exchange. They become scrap paper. And I put in parentheses there, scrap digital entries. Nobody wants to give anything away against them. It was this that happened with the continental currency in America in 1781, uh, with the French mandat territorial in 1796, so this uh, event here, with the German mark in 1923, and, and you could add uh, with the Zimbabwe dollar in 2011 or whatever, with the Venezuelan Bolivar in 2017. This book was written way before that, of course. It will happen again when the same conditions appear. 
if a thing has to be used as a medium of exchange, public opinion must not believe that the quantity of this thing will increase beyond all bounds. Inflation is a policy that cannot last. There you go. And uh, you just have to look at the uh, M2 money supply, how it's been accelerating higher, right? Uh, and pretty soon, I think people, uh, the masses will wake, wake up and that's when we'll be uh, in the crack up boom <laughs> and it will be impossible uh, to really uh, exchange your paper or your currency, fiat currency. Uh, as he said there, people, uh, nobody wants to give anything away against them. And that's when uh, uh, the whole system will implode. And for those of you who keep saying that the dollar hasn't collapsed or other fiat currencies haven't collapsed, I just wanted to show you this. Probably some of you have seen this before, how much you could buy with $20 in 9805. 2013. Uh, I'm not sure <laughs> what the uh, supermarket trolley looks like in 2022 for $20, but I would say maybe a, a really a two really nice steaks or maybe even uh, a really good quality steak. That's all you can get for it. So there you go. And uh, it's not just going to be the US dollar. It's going to be all the other fiat currencies because they're all a derivative of the dollar and that goes back to the uh, Bretton Woods agreement uh, where they fix um, the dollar uh, to an ounce of gold at $35 and then all the other currencies were fixed uh, versus the dollar so indirectly to gold and uh, yeah all major fiat currencies uh, they nowadays they they came into existence because of the dollar so when the dollar goes all of them will go as well because uh, a lot of countries use the dollar as the base for their monetary system instead of gold yeah a lot of them have gold but they have a lot more uh, US dollars so that in my opinion is when <laughs> the crack up boom will begin and uh, As for gold, uh, there's a passage here in this book. I just wanted to go through this passage in Fiat Money Inflation uh, in France, uh, where they mention gold. And just to show you that nothing has changed, <laughs> even back then, over 200 years ago, a, a lot of people who were pushing this assignats, the fiat currency or fiat money, uh, they're trying to denigrate gold, saying that it would go to zero as well, just like some people do today. Uh, it says, he too predicted, as many others had done, a time when gold was to lose all its value since all exchanges would be made with this admirable guaranteed paper and therefore that coin would come out from the places where it was hoarded. He foretold prosperous times uh, to France in the case these great issue, issues of paper were continued and declared these the only means to ensure happiness, glory, <laughs> and liberty to the French nation. So it did not end up very well, and they got Napoleon. And this is uh, what Napoleon uh, did when he came to power at his first cabinet council. It says here, at the first cabinet council, Bonaparte was asked what he intended to do. He replied, I will pay cash or pay nothing. From this time, he conducted all his operations on this basis. He arranged the assessments, funded the debt, and made payments in cash. And from this time, during all the campaigns of Marengo, Austerlitz, Jena, Eilau, Friedland, down to the peace of Til, uh, Tilsit in 1807, there was but one suspension of specie payment, and this was only for a few days. So when he means paying cash, he doesn't mean what we think of cash today. He meant gold and silver and specie. That's coin, coinage, gold and silver coin. So that's what happened. <laughs> after the collapse of the assignats, Napoleon went back to real money. 
So, and it's gonna be the same thing all over again. <laughs> I can't tell you exactly when, but anyway, let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. It's uh, 20 to nine a.m. London time. We've got spot gold, 17.90.70. It's down just uh, about a dollar. Uh, range has been 17.85 to 17.95. Uh, silver is actually up right now, up about four cents at 22.51, right near the highs. High has been 22.54, low 22.24. Stock market, the Dow future is down 10 points. The NASDAQ future is up 54 points or a third of a percent. The uh, S&P 500 is up three points, about 0.1 of a percent. So uh, stock market's fairly quiet right now. The FTSE is up 15 points or 0.2 of a percent. To the currencies, uh, sterling is up a third at 134.40. Uh, the euro is up a quarter of a percent at 111.72. Dollar is up 0.2 versus the yen at 115.44. And uh, the dollar continues to rebound versus the yuan right now. We were up 0.2 at 638.30. So I, I, I don't think the Chinese want the dollar dropping too quickly either. I'm sure they're, they're probably intervening a little bit. Recently, we got down to like 632, which was a multi-year low. To the other currencies, uh, we got the Aussie dollar up almost 1% actually at 7050. Uh, we've got the... Uh, Let's see, the dollar is down a third versus the loonie or the Canadian or the trucker dollar <laughs> at 127.23. And the Kiwi dollar is up half a percent at 65.80. Uh, to finish off, WTI crude, it's up uh, three quarters of a percent, 86.94. High grade copper uh, up two thirds of a percent, 434. And natural gas has been rebounding uh, quite well the u.s natural gas uh right now is uh at 488 and uh tell you in percentage terms that's up five and a half percent the 10-year yield this morning is at uh, 1.78 percent that's unchanged the uh, shorter end of the curve is up about uh, two basis points uh things like the two-year yield and the five-year yield uh, while the two years up two and the five year yield is up one. So it's a little bit of curve uh, flattening. And uh, an inverted yield curve, like from twos to 10, uh, usually means uh, signals a recession. And, and we've seen uh, the Atlanta Fed uh, GDP forecast now for the first quarter, almost negative. And, and we've seen Bank of America, I think, uh, came out saying that they expect almost a contraction for GDP in the first quarter. So yeah, good luck Federal Reserve tightening into a recession. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you uh, hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Rumble, Twitter, Facebook, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.